Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm excited to do my first video in my Burgundy Basic series. And why I'm doing this is I think Burgundy is one of the most difficult regions um, to understand. Um, two reasons. One, generally it's, a, um, it's very pricey, it's very expensive. So even if you, um, uh, you do a lot of research, it's very difficult to taste. A lot of these wines and two it's basically a very difficult region to understand because there's two so many different vineyards so I thought I would just make a series to make it a little bit easier for everyone and start from the basics so I know I'll be generalizing a lot but let's just um, take it slowly let's learn together I'll admit to you that I'm not an expert in this region I am taking more of an interest in this region now and I'm drinking more of those wines and I hope to learn with everyone uh, on this topic. Burgundy is in a region in southeastern France. The closest cities are Beaune and uh, Lyon. And it is, um, because it is an old world, um, because it's from France, it's considered old world. And what we mean by old world is that in general, the grape varietal is not placed on the bottle whereas with BC wines or with uh, North American wines you'll see Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay. You won't see that with old world wines and thus you won't see it with Burgundy wines. With the Burgundy region it's the grape varietal is fairly simple. So for white wines almost all Burgundy white wines are made with a Chardonnay grape and with red wines almost all red wines are made with Pinot Noir grape. So it's fairly simple. There is exceptions, obviously, to the rule. For white wines, I can't think of many, but um, for red wines, there is a region, Beaujolais, which makes Gamay. But these are, I don't want to talk too much about um, exceptions this, in this video. I want to make generalizations and just not complicate things and just kind of give you basic structures about Burgundy. In my Bordeaux basic series, I talked about the 1855 classification system, which is quite famous. A lot of people know about that in Bordeaux. But a lot of people don't know or don't realize that there was also a classification system in Burgundy, then in 1861 by a person called Laval and the Agricultural Board at that point. And so they classified all the um, best vineyards in um, Burgundy, and it wasn't really um, finalized or formalized till about 1936, when it was put into legislation. All these um, areas of Burgundy. The Burgundy classification is based on four tiers in a hierarchy, and if you can think about it, it is goes from um, smallest to uh, sorry, largest area to smallest area, and so I'll kind of go through that. But the rationale behind that is, as you get a smaller area, then you get more focused characteristics and grape varietals. So as an example, you know, if I was growing grapes in British Columbia, if, if those grapes could come from anywhere in British Columbia, that's very, that's really diverse. So you really can't, uh, the quality level will be diverse and also the characteristics. But if I said, well, only those grapes can be grown in, um, Vancouver, that would be much more specialized because there would be, you know, very small area and it would also be um, uh, like more consistent and because there's smaller people probably uh, more consistency and quality. It would also probably be more in demand because there's fewer grapes that could be grown in Vancouver than in the greater area of British Columbia. Now, if I limited that to you know, the street that I live on, that would be even more limited and more characteristic, presumably. So that's kind of the system. That's the hierarchy going from a large land base to smaller and smaller with the idea that when we get to the smallest kind of areas, the consistency of the grape quality is going to be the best and also the um, quality because they've chosen the best, they've mapped out the best uh, vineyards. Um, is going to be um, the highest and that's why these the, the wineries that are listed at the highest level of this hierarchy system are the great in greatest demand and 
command the greatest prices. Nowhere else, I believe, in the world is the term terroir uh, more important than Burgundy. And so terroir is not just the, the land itself and the soil. It's a number of things. It, it includes the climate, the slope, um, the location and how it, how it um, looks in terms of the sun exposure and how these people came up with um, the best plots of land to grow certain things. I guess it's by trial and error and by expertise or word of mouth, but somehow that system has been ingrained. And today's video is not to argue the merits of the system, but to just get an understanding. I think um, it's important when we go to uh, regions like Bordeaux and Burgundy to keep an open mind, not to just um, at the first glance say, well, this is all wrong, or we, I don't agree with the system. My hope is that I can explain these systems first before we make any judgments, and then we can figure out what points that we can use as consumers and what points um, that we um, can ignore. And I find that sometimes people jump to conclusions too fast and they miss out the good quality and the point of wines and how to rationalize what wines to buy just by taking you know, certain information and not really knowing it. And the classic example is the 1855 classification system where everyone thinks it is a measure of quality which it never was. And you can watch my video series on that for more information about the Bordeaux system. Let's get back to Burgundy. So again, as I said, there's four um, classes in the hierarchy. And there are exceptions, but I'm not going to confuse people by the exceptions in this video. Uh, uh, if people enjoy this video, I'll go on to explain more about Burgundy and we'll go step by step to build our understanding of Burgundy. So at the bottom is what they call regional wines. So regional wines, um, they can, or, you know, generic wines. So they can come from anywhere in um, the Burgundy region. And these are generally um, the most value wines. They're not going to be complex. They're generally in Canada uh, in BC under $50. Simple, good drinking Pinot Noirs, cherry, um, not very much oak aging. Um, they, they're for popping open. They're really for just a nice um, nice sipping wine. They're not going to be complex. They're not for storage. That accounts for almost 51% of the wines coming out of Burgundy. So um, they're value, but they're a good entry point to understanding Burgundy. Having said that, as we move up the chain, um, that is not a good, like, Burgundy, like Bordeaux, it's not a great representation of the Grand Cru level wine. So if you drink this um, entry level, what they call regional wines, uh, and you don't like Burgundy, that doesn't mean you don't like Burgundy wines. It may be that, you know, that's an entry point. And so we have to take it at that. It's an entry point, simple wines, have some fruit, um, gives you a kind of a little taste of what Burgundy is about, but um, really you have to move up the chain to kind of understand uh, more about Burgundy. The easiest way to identify these regional or the level, the uh, lowest level in the hierarchy wines is they're no, usually labeled Bourgogne, which is B-O-U-R-G-O-G-N-E. That'll be on the label. Unfortunately, I don't have an example here. Um, and then the other thing is that they may actually say Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So if you see a Burgundy wine that actually says the grape varietal, Per Pinot Noir or Chardonnay, good, probably good bet that it's on this lower end value wine. There are exceptions. There are specific uh, regional wines, um, like Macon is one, and there's a couple others. But again, I don't want to go into exceptions too much. Just know that there is a kind of a lowest level of entry level of Burgundy wines. Most of them are labeled Bourgogne wines. They may have the, despite the, the, the old world, they may have the grape varietal on them. And these are just really entry level wines to get your palate used to um, Burgundy. Next up the hierarchy are 
village wines. So again, remember when we talked about Bourgogne wines, these are, can come anywhere from Burgundy. Now we're going to go into specified regions. So I have one here, which is from Pomard, uh, which I just uh, drank, which I will actually uh, review um, probably later. Really like the, the label is terrible, but um, it's from Butterfield and he buys grapes from different growers in uh, Burgundy, but actually it's an exceptional wine. So if you'll see on it, it says the region Pomard and it doesn't say anything else in there. So Pomard is a um, village region, so a village area, the region of Pomard. So all the grapes that make this wine come from the region of Pomard only, you cannot get it from other regions in Burgundy. So again, we're getting more specific and it's better quality. So wines in this um, category range from about $50 to maybe about $120. Uh, these are really, in some in good vintages, really great wines, exceptional value and really good starting points to really understand Burgundy. So again, with the entry level, um, they're, they're good drinking wines, but I don't think you learn a lot about Burgundy or it's hard to compare them to the, uh, the um, higher end Burgundies. Once you get to this level, the village level, some, there are some great representations of the villages and you can kind of get a sense of the distinguishing features of each village and you start to see differences in terms of complexity, tannin, uh, fruit, um, earthiness. So this level is quite acceptable. Again, it's um, harder to find value wines and as you go up the chain, you're going to get better representations and more. You're going to have, probably have much better experiences, but it's going to get pricier. So the first level that we talked about, the uh, regional wines, that accounts for anywhere between 41 to 52 percent uh, of all wines produced. This level is around 36 percent of wines uh, produced from Burgundy. So already with the lower two levels, you're already talking about, you know, probably close to 75 to 80% of all Burgundy wines that are produced are these, um, f the, the lowest level and the third level. And so that's the majority of wines that people are probably going to drink on a day-to-day -day basis or be um, aware of. The next level up on the hierarchy is called Premier Cru Wines. And this is smaller areas. So. For instance, within Pomard, there could be a smaller area with um, that grows that is a better vineyard site to grow Pinot Noir or Chardonnay grapes, and um, that would be what they call a premier cru vineyard. So here I have an example. Again, it's a very so two things about this um, hierarchy or this level. Some of them will say one ER, so premier, or someone will actually say premier crew. Both are the same. It's just a stylistic thing. Um, so, and then here is what we'll see. So there's two types, and I'm going to close up on these bottles later on. This is from Liwa, which I'm going to review. I, I'm going to have a uh, video reviewing this wine. This is the 2005 Pomard. So you'll see it just says premier crew on there. This is another wine that I've re reviewed called Puisidor, one of my favorites. So you'll see it's from the region or the uh, village of Chambol Musigny, and it says Premier Cru on it, and it also has a wording Les Charmes. So Les Charme is the specific um, good or uh, vineyard site inside Chambol Musigny that's considered a Premier Cru. So you're wondering, well, why does Pomard, this one that says Premier Cru, doesn't have any other words on it? Well, this means that um, for this wine for Liwa, they can take um, grapes from any uh, Premier Cru vineyard inside Pomard. So the difference between these two is for this wine, the Charms is Sorry, the, this wine, the, vin, the grapes were only taken from the vineyard of Le Charmes, which is a premier cruise vineyard. For the Liwa wine, they could be taken from any premier cru vineyard, including Le Charmes or others, to make this wine. And 
Again, these are just knowledge. Let's not make any judgment yet. And advantage, I don't want to go into too, too much specifics because it can be very, very confusing. Let's keep it simple for this first video and then we'll move forward. I forgot to mention that for the Premier Crew, that accounts for 10 to 18% of the wines produced in Burgundy. So very, very um, small production. Uh, again, we're getting very small areas of land and we're consequently they're producing well, maybe a couple hundred cases a year and so because of the um it's a great site and because there's so little of it that's why the price goes up so much these are going to be um some very very good expressions of the wine and a far far cry from the first level of the bourguignon wines is there a huge step up between a village wine and a premier cru wine. In price there is, uh, because premier cru wines probably will range anywhere from um, $180 to several thousand dollars. It depends on the quality. Uh, so again, this is a hierarchy. We're not gonna talk about um, other things, but we're just trying to get the hierarchy straight in our minds for this first video. And the last, um, High, uh, level in this hierarchy are called Grand Cru wines. So there are in total 33 um, Grand Cru sites uh, in Burgundy. And these are the top of the top. So they may not be any smaller or larger than uh, Premier Cru sites, but you can kind of think of them as um, all-star Premier Cru sites. So when we went to the, again, the, the first level was more uh, very basic wines or wines that can come from anywhere in Burgundy. The next level up, which is the village, is specific villages, which is smaller. Then the next level up now are Premier and Grand Cru, which are even smaller areas. And you can think of the difference between a Grand Cru and a Premier Cru as a Grand Cru vineyard site is the top, like superstar Premier Cru sites. So really, really good sites. And this is an example. This is the DRC. And their sites, I think, are most of their wines are, are Grand Cru. And so it will say Grand Cru on the bottle. I wanted to do a close up on each of the labels. I find that we can find so much information on labels. So the first one is Butterfield, Pomard. And you can scan around there. There's nothing in the front or the back that identifies Grand Cru or Premier Cru. So you would say this has got to be the second level which is a um, village wine. And again, the first level, the Bourg Bourgogne, it would say Bourgogne in it, wouldn't have a region. Uh, there are exceptions, but again, we'll go for them case by case. There are some specific um, regional um, uh, kind of areas, but again, it's almost by memory. You have to know that one of them is Macon. And so you would know that Macon wines are the lowest level, which is regional wine, this would, Pomard, would be a village wine. Some, it's somewhat, you have to kind of know, um, do some memorization. So this is a good example because it's the same region, Pomard. It's from the producer, Liwa, but it'll say Premier Cru. So it's an elevated wine. It's from Premier, the, the grapes used on this are come from Premier Cru uh, vineyard sites in Pomard. So that's kind of interesting. You have two pomards, right? One is a uh, village wine and one is a premier crew wine. Now we move over to this premier crew wine. Again, it's from the Chambon Moussigny region, which is the village, but it's got premier crew. So it's going to come from specific premier crew or better uh, vineyard sites in Chambon Moussigny. And in particular, Les Charmes. That, so that means all the grapes that are used for this wine came from the premier cru region or vineyard of Les Charmes. Whereas with uh, Pomard, the Liwa Pomard, it doesn't have an extra word like this. So it could come from any multiple uh, premier cru vineyards um, in Pomard. And we'll just look at the back. That usually tells you a little bit of information about the, but I don't see. Again, we're just scanning the label for information. Next is Grand Eschichel. 
And at first I was looking at this, I was saying, well, how can I tell it's a grand cru? It doesn't say anything. Um, I know in particular Grand National Show is a grand cru vineyard, but you look at the back and it says grand cru. So again, this is all controlled by law. So in um, Burgundy, you can't go like, for instance, this wine can't be cute and say grand cru on it. It can't say that. And likewise, this wine cannot go and say premier cru. That I think it's a law and it's probably a very big offense in France to kind of uh, mislabel wines. I hope this has been useful and not more confusing. This is my first video in this series. I hope people enjoy it and if they do, I'm happy to do more of them. But it's really important to break down Burgundy in basics and not to just jump in all at one time. And so I haven't, uh, I know for people that are more experienced drinking in the area of Burgundy, you'll think, while well, you've forgot a lot of information, you know, a trophy. That's true and I've intentionally left it out because we want to start from basic building blocks and not talk about the exceptions too much. I think we want to get in our mind the basic structure of this region, which is very complicated, and then go to um, you know, specific exceptions once we understand the region a little bit better. So if people like this, please comment, please like, and then um, I'm happy to do another video maybe going through the different regions in Burgundy and we'll just build on our knowledge. Until next time, happy drinking.